Okay, so the very last thing that I'm going to do is kind of show you guys how to do a, a, a self-check of to make sure that you have the information correct. Um, I could also you could also look at it as a, as a shortcut to find a missing component. For example, if you've already calculated the cost of goods sold, you could use this alternative uh, self-check to actually come to the correct answer of ending inventory. And it starts off with our cost of goods sold formula. We have a cost of goods sold formula that we use. Our cost of goods sold formula Our cost of goods sold formula is beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory. And that's our cost of goods sold formula. And so we could use this cost of goods sold formula to back into to make sure that we have everything correct. Now, all you're doing is plugging in the cost of this information to equal cost of goods sold. So, for example, beginning inventory, what is the cost of our beginning inventory? Well, 10 units at $2, obviously that's 20 bucks. Our beginning inventory is $20. Now we would have to calculate the total cost of all of our purchases. So I'm going to just put the answer here. We know 4 at 3 is 12. We know 5 at 4 is 20. And we know 1 at 5 is 5. So that's obviously 32, right? And 37, right? So 32 and 37, right? So our beginning inventory plus our purchases equals uh, a total of 57. That will never change regardless of what method you use. These two components itself is considered your cost of goods available for sale. Cost of goods available for sale. These are the total cost of your goods available for sale. So regardless of what method that you choose to measure in the inventory, all cost of goods sold, this number will stay the same because that's given. And so what I was saying earlier is that you could check yourself because if you correctly calculated into inventory, you're going to automatically get the cost of goods sold. Now here's another thing that you can look at to make sure you're right. We calculated our cost of goods available for sale and we summed it up and it was what, 57? If you do some transposing, which I don't feel like doing right now, but trust me, if you think about it logically, what you sold plus what you didn't sell will give you your total cost of what you had to sell. I will repeat it. What you sold and what you didn't sell, if you add it together, that's what you initially had to sell. So what am I saying? If I add up my ending inventory plus the cost of my cost of goods sold, I should always get this number. And that's how I know I did this correct. If we look at our specific identification, my ending inventory was what, $21? My cost of goods sold was what, $36? We add them together, we will get what, $57. You should be able to do that for every particular method and come back to $57 if you add up your ending inventory plus your cost of goods sold. It will always be the case except for average cost because of the rounding, but it will be very close to $57. In a way that you can kind of do a shortcut, for example, Let's say I've already calculated my ending inventory for specific identification, and I don't have time to go through and calculate it for the cost of goods sold. Well, if I already know this 57, which I do based on the information given, I can just finish the formula, right? I can plug in my ending inventory, what I said I already calculated, which was 21, and if I subtract 21 from 50, 57, I'm going to get what? 36. And so this is a very powerful formula that you can utilize to either self, double check your information, or take a shortcut. This pretty much summarizes 
the most important stuff for chapter eight that I feel was worthy of lecturing. So we're going uh, chapter eight. I am sorry. I meant chapter six. And so um, we're going to move forward to chapter seven now.